This is a classic piece of Brit art from the 1990s and it cost when you about 25 thousand pounds. I'm going to show you around it, tell you all about it and the artist. We're going to discuss what it might be worth today and whilst I do all of those things I'm going to do something that you might think has something to do with restoring this piece but it isn't. What I'm going to do is exactly what the artist in the 1990s intended future owners of this piece to do. So get ready. Let me know if you're shocked, horrified, or deeply impressed. Okay, this is going to get messy, so I've got to make some space and make sure I don't ruin everything else around this piece of art. Preparation is everything. Right, while I get ready to literally start throwing red ink all over the place, let me tell you about the piece and the artist. What you're looking at here is an original Abigail Lane. Abigail Lane, English artist, born in 1967. Now, she was one of the first exhibiting artists with Damien Hirst at his free show in 1988. They all became known, you might remember, as the YBA Group, standing for Young British artists. Remember Tracy Emin, Damien Hirst, well they were the best known but Abigail Lane was there as well. The whole group were known for their shock tactics and wild artistic living but they also had an unusual arty attitude to business. In other words they were entrepreneurial and they didn't mind making money and their works sold for fortunes and they still do. You might be looking at this thing and thinking to yourself, well, that looks like a massive ink pad. You know, the kind of things that we used in the 80s, 90s and earlier with a, a rubber stamp to mark invoices paid, that kind of thing. Well, you'd be right. So that's exactly what it is. This is an Abigail Lane ink pad. She was known for creating these massive wall sculptures between 1991 and 1997. I can tell you that the earlier ones were black, the middle range ones, the middle period, were blue, the later ones were red. So this one dates to about 1997. Now luckily for us, the artist, Abigail Lane, has supplied us with replacement ink. Barely any has been used in what? 25, 26 years. So let's find a container, there we go. Plastic container for the ink. The ink obviously is very ruddy. So, although this property is getting restored, I really don't want to get the red ink all over the floor. So simply fill a container. And you can, funnily enough, get very artistic with these things if you wanted to. I am going to re-ink it completely, but I'll give you an idea of the kind of thing that you can do if you like. This is a changing piece of contemporary art. And if you don't believe me, believe Abigail Lane herself, because that's how she always described these oversized ink pads, as always unfinished pieces of sculpture or art. You can do what you like with these things. And let me tell you, and I'm going to get to it, I promise you, the YBA group did not do that. These were real party pieces. Just think about it. What could you do with an ink pad? Think of impressions, etc. Let your mind run wild. They did. So I'm now going to finish off the re-inking properly and take it back almost to how it was in 1997 with the aluminium panel and the red felt. Now take a look at the aluminium actually you can see it's not in the best of conditions but that's okay this is again changing art. The art is evolving. You could clean that if you wanted to. I'm not going to. 
I like it looking like it's been alive for 25 plus years. People have closed the pad, the ink has stuck to the aluminium, they've reopened it. It's telling a story of its life. You can clean them if you want to, but with an antiques background, I like things to look their age. So I'm gonna leave that absolutely as it is. And what about the construction of an Abigail Lane original ink pad? Well, take a look, you've got felt, the red felt, you've got aluminium, the, the lid, which is nice and light and can be closed. In fact, these things can be displayed closed if you want to, I've seen them before in exhibitions, displayed closed. So the aluminium is quite light, but the whole thing put together is incredibly heavy because it's mounted with MDF, so luckily, Abigail Lane in the 90s provided not just the red ink, but big metal brackets and even the screws to fit these things on the wall. But if you're going to buy an Abigail Lane ink pad, for goodness sake, make sure it's well and truly fitted because they are monstrously heavy. And here's a top tip. If you do buy an Abigail Lane ink pad and you're going to re-ink it, don't do what I did and forget the fact that the ink might just run down the wall. Always remember if you buy an Abigail Lane ink pad and you're gonna recolor it, factor in a little bit of domestic redecoration. It's all worth it. Right, almost there, a quick tidy up, and then we'll talk about value in today's market. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you what the YBA, the young British artists, used to do with these ink pads at their wild parties. Think ink impressions, think body parts. So the obvious example would be, of course, a handprint, but you could imagine what other things were imprinted against these ink pads. So there you have it, hand, nice and wet, and create a new piece of art, one-off, like so. Then you get all your friends to do exactly the same. And you make your own couple more. your own contemporary piece of art. So here is the big question then. What is an Abigail Lane genuine ink pad worth in today's market? Well, I can tell you that Abigail Lane pieces haven't done quite as well in recent times as say Tracy Emin and her bed for two and a half million quid or a Damien Hurst shark in a tank at seven million pounds. I'm a fan of both their work, but completely out of my price bracket. So you can buy then an original Abigail Lane. Well, look online, find her these things, the ink pads on Christie's Bottom, Sotheby's auction result sites, ranging between four to eight thousand pounds. This one priced at five thousand pounds. Let me know what do you think about that. Cheerio.